Rub up your engines! Today we're gonna figure out why this SUV is making noise when they're driving and how to fix it. Now as we drive down the road, we can hear kind of a roaring sound. And it definitely sounds like it's coming from the back. Now the axle bearings are very expensive. So it's hard to tell if it's the left or the right. With the receiving unit turned on, I can hear the noise on each side and I can switch back and forth to see which one is actually making a noise. So we'll get the number three and we'll put the noise clamp that picks up the noise on that side on the left and use a giant twist dot here so that'll hold it in place. We'll know three is on the left. Now we'll get some cutters and cut off the excess because we don't want it hanging down and getting run over by the tire. So now that side's okay. We know left is three. We'll go to the other side and we'll clamp the other one next to that wheel bearing and we'll hook this up here and we'll get that on nice and tight we'll cut the excess off we don't want anything hanging down to get caught now we know number four is on the right with a light on and we got to turn this one on okay it's lights on the top and number three is on the left now we're driving down the road i'm listening to channel three and channel three isn't making any loud noises it's pretty silent i don't hear any kind of roaring so we'll switch it to channel four push it on four now it's on four we can listen to four I hear a little bit more noise in number four. But truth be told, it's really not that loud on either side. So I'm gonna do another test. I'm gonna put number three on the rear end on the differential. It could be the differential starting to make noise. So the number three, we're gonna get the noise clamp off. We'll put it on the rear differential here. So we'll get the end and we'll clamp it here on the differential. So it's gonna pick up any noise the differential's making. And just for kicks, We'll get the number four up to the right side of the differential. So we'll get noise from both sides of the differential. And here we go again. We'll turn it on, have it on number three and take it for a spin. And lo and behold, I can hear it whining a lot louder when it's on number three. And I'll switch it to number four. And number four is whining even louder. Listen to this. You can hear it whining now. So now thanks to the Steelman chassis here, we've pinpointed the sound. We didn't guess that it was an axle bearing. Those things are 330 bucks a set. We would have replaced those if we guessed. It wouldn't have fixed anything. It's in the differential. Now this Highlander does have 152,000 miles on it. So we know the differential is worn. If you thought the hub and bearing assembly was bad at $385.70 a piece. The differential assembly is $1,820 plus over $700 labor to replace. Now the differential itself only holds 1.9 quarts of Toyota ATF-WS. So we're going to change the fluid. Because it can help it last longer. I mean with the mileage this has on. And you're going to spend $2,500 replacing that differential. And believe me, these days nobody knows how to rebuild those things on these hybrids. You just have to replace the parts. So we're going to change the fluid. So long it lasts. Sometimes they still go years, they make noise, yes, but they can still last quite some time. Before I do that, you might have wondered when originally I put each sound transmitter, one on the left axle bearing and one on the right axle bearing, how I heard a little bit of noise on the right axle bearing. Well, that makes total sense because the left side of the differential was making some noise, but the right side was making a lot more noise. So that noise was going to move over to the axle bearing on the right hand side so the right we heard a little bit of noise but we heard a lot of noise when we put it on the differential that's what's great about these noise broadcasting machines you can keep pinpointing by getting closer and closer and when you get to the real loud noise you know that's where it's coming from so we'll jack it up in here again that throw a big mat under there and a jack stand here we go and don't forget the drain pan you got to drain it in something make sure you got the right side this is about every socket known to man and in this case it's an h10 allen socket just to make sure there we go fits right in there that's the drain hole these are awful hard to get off so you get a really long extension bar like this then you can pop them loose you just have to pull like mad Ugh. wow that one's in there Ugh. finally they take a while to snap sometimes. But once they snap, the weird thing is, you can do it with your finger then. They just get so tight, they kind of weld on, but then they just come right off. 
and in it goes. You can see it's red automatic transmission fluid. Only use the Toyota type. ATFWS. This is a hybrid car. It's not just a differential. It has electronics in it too. You want to stick with a factory fluid. So we just drain it out. It says 1.9 quarts and we pump 1.9 quarts back in. We examine the plug. It's got a little magnetic part on it. So there's a tiny amount of metal particles, all that black stuff. You look closely, you can see there's little tiny metal particles. Now it's not outrageous, but it does show it's warm. And changing the fluid, it's gonna help it as good as it can, and it still might go for years. If say this magnet had been covered with big chunks of metal, you'd know it's too late. It's not gonna last that long. But since they were just fine little particles, it can still go a while. Then we finger tight the drain plug. Then get the extension bar and the socket and get it nice and tight. <clears throat> then of course, you got to fill it up. The fill plug's on the opposite side. So we go to the other side, way up here in the corner. Not easy to see, but there it is up there. And as you can see, when I wheel around here, there's the head. The head is right in it, just like the other one. It's the same 10 millimeter Allen head socket. Then we just push like mad again. Ugh, that now it's loose. Now this drain plug's on the top. But as you can see as I get it out here in the sun. As you can see here it's perfectly clean. That's a good sign. It's up in the air but still. The fact that it's all clean says that hey we might have good luck just changing the fluid. Now since it's up in the air and it's hidden by the top of the truck. You can't pour it in. So you got to pump it in. Use these handy pumps. There we go. We're pumping it in and we're pumping 1.9 quarts that came out back in. Tighten the Allen cap back on so it doesn't leak out of the top. Get it nice and snug. And let the jack down. And now basically the customer's just going to drive it around. It doesn't have any play. It handles fine. And yeah, we know the differential's worn, but it might last for quite some time. So now you know, rather than guess at where noise is coming from, you can use these electronic sensors and not waste money replacing parts that aren't even bad in the first place. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Here we go Porsche fans or people like me who are not Porsche fans. Porsche is recalling 2020 Porsche 911 because they say it's due to software problems that if you push your hazard lights, the hazard lights don't come on. <laughs> no, you would think that something as simple as you push a switch to turn the hazard lights on would be pretty much a bulletproof thing. That's because you don't understand Porsches like I do. Everything. I mean everything. Thing electronically and that thing is run by computers. So it's not as simple as you push the button. It sends electricity to the hazard flashers and makes them flash on and off. That is all run by computers and computer sensors. All they're going to do is reprogram the computer because the hazard won't come on right when you push that button. It's not as simple as the button sends electricity to the flashers like it used to be. And to me, this is kind of a microcosm of what's wrong with almost everything in our society and especially high tech cars these days is too much computer control of things. If the hazard light button won't even work because of a software glitch, imagine the rest of the stuff's going to happen. Now this is a 2020. These are brand new cars, right? Well, they've been out a few years. I work on these things. I've seen more nonsense happen to those things as they age. So into the future. Is it better? Is it worse? Well, in this case, it's definitely worse. Another GM foible. GM's recalling 350,000 2019 to 2020 Silverados, GMC, and Sierras because they may have used excessive glue on the battery terminal going from the battery to the alternator. And what happens is that glue can act as an insulator and you can lose power so the vehicle can just stall where you're going down the road because it loses electricity. I've always warned people about GM and electronic problems. They can't even make a battery cable without it shorting out. Their quality control is so poor that the machines are putting too much glue on it. The glue's covering up the contact and then the electrical system shuts down on you. I mean, they've really gotten to a point where anyone with half a brain cell is going to realize they have quality control problems at GM. They've had them for ages, but it seems to me that's even getting worse as time goes on instead of getting better. They don't seem to have learned from their mistakes. So don't make that mistake yourself. Don't buy one. Mitsubishi for life says, I got a 92 Mitsubishi going on 188,000 miles. Coolant is gone. I don't see any leaks, but I look at the coolant. It's a brown color. What could it be? It doesn't overheat, but when it's running, there's water coming from the exhaust. Oh, I can tell you right now, you're blowing your head gasket. And the Mitsubishi is notorious for that. Brown, oil, and water mix 
and it's going to look brownish instead of being a regular color of your coolant. Now you can do a test. I've got a video of how to tell if your head gasket's blown. You can do that. You can buy the test stuff on Amazon for about 30 bucks. Do it yourself. It's not hard to do. It works on any car. Your head gasket's got to be blowing and that, of course, then it burns the water and water comes out the tailpipe and it's a 92 Gallant with 188,000 miles. Me, I just say get rid of it or if you want to be a gambler, put some head gasket sealer in it like the uh, bars one that AutoZone sells for like 20 bucks. See if it lasts a little bit longer and then when it doesn't run anymore, just junk the thing. It's really not worth putting that kind of money into it knowing that the head might be bad too. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.